Hello and welcome to the channel. We are the Hollow Grumps. I am Colum. And I'm Liam. And we're here today with another Star Trek Picard discussion review for episode 6, The Impossible Box. But before we talk about it, if we could get you to like, subscribe, and also comment on our channel as well. We'd really appreciate that because it helps our channel grow and it puts a smile on our grumpy faces. And we also do a live stream after every episode airs of Star Trek Picard. So tune in if you're interested. Mm. So this episode itself was written by Nathan Zayas. He has no sci-fi credits, only one other TV credit, a show called Major Crimes. And was it Hawaii Five-0? Uh, I think that was the director, Maja Vrilo. Maja Vrilo directed this, yes. Hasn't actually directed any sci-fi except for one short trek. Runaway, which was terrible. Good God, I want my eyes gouged out. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> so we open with a nice dream sequence, which again is kind of like the old cold, cold openings from the previous one. Uh, they never seem to open in the present day, if that makes sense. It's kind of awkward and forced, but it's not as awkward as the scene that follows. This bedroom scene is so painful. It was as painful as the first time we saw it in the last three episodes. Everyone's hiding something. But I can't hide my disgust for this painful scene. Soji actually has to explain to a Romulan about Romulan culture. Stuff we've never heard before. Do Romulans, I wonder, actually invent these names, these uh, secret names that they have? When they meet someone they love. Just call me uh, Max Steel. Yeah, that's my secret name now. Or, or as Narek would say, just call me Hey Sam. <coughs> Cajun sauce. Whispers in corridors. <coughs> so then we go back to the HMS Grande for the first time in the episode. And Gerati and Picard are having a conversation. Uh, Gerati tells Picard how Maddox died. And everyone has to move on, etc, etc. And, you know, that's it. They never really talk about Maddox ever again. Uh, Picard tells her that it's difficult for her and she replies suspiciously. Hmm. Elrond knows nothing and the people around him won't tell him anything. Because, you know, it's funnier when he's left in the lurch. Poor guy. Yeah. In case we forgot, Picard is a Borg and Gerati has to inform the audience of this because it hasn't been brought up at all. And uh, Picard gets triggered when Gerati is saying that Borg change. And it's, it's just looking for an excuse for... Sir Patrick Stewart to show off his his angry acting because we all love that from first contact. No! Like, no! No! The line must be drawn here! No, father! Two <coughs> syllables. <clears throat> uh, Picard ret returns to his faux chateau uh, to look up Romulan Instagram posts about the artifact. I'm, uh, I'm surprised they didn't have um, a commercial, you know, like, come to the artifact and throw out your old Borg pieces. Yeah, we'll you, give you new you, scars. Are you looking to get rid of that old eye, that processor arm, that claw hand? Come to the Romulan Reclamation Center and we'll get rid of it for free. Yeah, it's funny because the doctor was so good at um, removing the old Borg implants. Uh, why didn't they just copy his program? Because now that they're back in Starfleet, they can. And why don't they send him to the artifact to reclaim these Borg? Well, I suppose it only works well if you have both eyes intact, obviously. But but seven, I, seven didn't. Neither did each up. Really? Yeah, they they had fake eyes. I didn't know that. Remember, remember each chap's eye got pulled out and cut off, and it was like a big machinery. Oh no, I don't remember that at all. That was in the gruesome saw scene. Nope. The torture scene. No. Each chap gets shot in the heart. Each who? Who? Nope, I don't remember that. But, but thankfully, we cut to Rios playing football to show he is in fact Hispanic, or at least it feels that way. They're kind of playing on stereotypes here again. He's also playing alone and not really doing anything special with the ball. He's just keeping it up for a while. Gerati enters the scene and she affirms that she's just miserable all the time by telling Rios space is empty and cold and they're all going to die. I wish I packed a scarf. Oh. But this doesn't stop her from kissing him. Oh no. Or revealing that she has a superpower. The superpower of hindsight. She can see mistakes she's currently making. But then she moves on to more kissing because this show doesn't have enough forced romance. To cover up her feelings of hollowness, she decides to roll in the hay with Rios because that's, again, more forced romances. That's what we need, isn't it? Yes, and, and, and moving on to more non-consensual romances in the show. They're my favourite part. We get 
Rizzo and Narek. And they're having a bit of a spat over his uh, his Romulan his Romulan Borg Rubik's Cube thing. Uh, the scenes are painful. We we hate them. Really? Stop stop giving us the same scene over and over again of Narek saying, uh, they're making great progress here. And uh, Rizzo saying, I don't even, can't remember what she sounds like, evil. Uh, you're going too slow. It's time we use brute force. Like, but but in a British accent, you're going too slow. You, she sounds like an imperial spy. Yeah, let's go with an imperial spy. And she wants to, you know, just just beat up uh, uh, Soji and stick a bag on her head, you know, because it worked so well for Dash. And the only thing that's interesting that they mention in the scene is the fact that the 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 androids have a home world apparently, and that Narek mentions that. Patience is pertinent. That's just as applicable for Rizzo as it is for the audience, because we need patience. We go back to the HMS Grande, and Rafi has to get Picard a super secret, well, not secret, has to get Picard a super special diplomat pass for the day. Uh, this scene goes on for about two hours too long. Yeah, it feels like the whole episode was actually taken up by this scene, and it's ridiculous. Uh, Rafi is playing her best drunk so it's always interesting when they want to contact someone they just say it to the computer uh, computer contact Captain Emmy Ba-doom. hello there I was waiting the whole time to hear from you yeah. I have nothing better to do imagine if Picard just kept getting invaded on Next Generation by <laughs> phone calls that you had no control over uh, Captain we have uh, the Admiral on you um, will I pass it through to the radio room yes number one Ba-doom. oh hello there you know, it's kind of, yeah. When Rafi succeeds in blackmailing Captain Emmy to get Diplomat Pass for Picard, um, she gets a nice condescending applause. And then she's put to bed by Rios. The thing we both thought was very funny in this scene was they had this music playing. It was like, boo, boo, doo, boo, doo, 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 boo, doo. And it just reminded you of them um, playing an old RPG game or something like that. And you just have the menu paused in one of the areas. And it just has this music playing on loop, on loop, on loop. And, and it's just... so whimsical. It's great. And to be honest, it made the ad break a welcome distraction. I was actually glad for the ad break at this point, to be honest. I was like, oh, great. Get to see more raccoons selling their food. But unfortunately, the show continues. And we get more Narek and Soji. It makes me wonder, where is Picard in Star Trek Picard? Because we've seen very little of him. It actually turns out that Soji's mother only calls for 70 seconds to put her to sleep. I reckon this is a conspiracy, and so does Narek. Weirdly enough, I don't actually care about Rafi's life, or the fact that she's telling her story again, in case we forgot that in the last episode, because we know it cut back to Rafi and Rios in her bedroom. And for a split second, I thought Rios was going to roll in the hay with Rafi instead. Why not? And if, Why, not? Why don't we add that extra layer to rios's character that he'll um he's a womanizer take, take advantage of the drunk woman after rios tucks rafi back into bed we get a scene of soji calling her mom and falling asleep obviously she's actually been programmed this way but it is a bit needless a bit pointless i thought now thankfully we jump back once again to the hms grande crew and are granted permission for picard only to beam over and picard warns elrond not to follow him oh no I think that's foreshadowing, just like the necklace Picard takes from his geriatric tracksuit. Then we finally start to get some traction with Soji. We learn that everything Soji owns is 37 months old. Well, roughly. It says approximately. Uh, We actually get an interesting scene, though, when Picard does finally beam onto the Borg cube. We're left with Picard, the old man, wandering a Borg cube alone. His PTSD gets triggered and he's forced to wander across a bridge with no rails. And just as his PTSD is getting the better of him, the Borg come to rescue him. Hugh actually stands mysteriously behind a head height light. Romulans actually must love their spotlights because they pretty much just blinded me for this whole scene. Yeah, I'm not surprised he nearly fell over because I think I would in that dark chamber. Picard then gets a grand tour of the Borg cube and he finds out from Hugh... That they refer to themselves as XBs, and that it stands for former Borg, and most certainly not X Borg. Uh, but I thought it was uh, interesting that they want to claim a new identity for themselves. So instead of something unique like the Arisen or something stupid like that, they come up with 
Ex Borg. Ex Box. It's hardly hardly claiming your new identity. Then Picard says to Hugh that he's looking for somebody called Soji, which he goes about in a really roundabout way. And Hugh says to him, Oh, um, I knew there might be something up with Soji since that dashing young Romulan spy came on board. Just in case we all forgot how dashing and... Oh, he's so handsome. Tra- yeah, handsome he is. Uh, Narek tries to subtly trigger Soji. He asks her to take part in a brand new Romulan ritual. <laughs> an ancient tradition. And it's essentially just guided meditation. It's very mundane. Uh, then we jump back to Picard and we see the Romulans don't have the flair for Borg recovery that Beverly Crusher or Voyagers, the Doctor, had. It looks like they take their time looking for Soji and we get another scene of Rafi and Rios, uh, which is irrelevant. Uh, but it does tell us that nobody ever uses the word Zatvash again. Am I right? Yeah, I have no. I haven't heard it since it was first mentioned. Since episode two? Yeah, not Three. once. The only people who mentioned it actually were uh, Zaban and, oh, I couldn't remember her name. But thankfully, we move on because this episode is almost over, but we've still got a few hurdles to get through. We take part in the Jalmak or Jalmak. It's a completely boring concept. It's a guided meditation. Soji is having a dream again, but she's talking through it. Feels a bit weird. I, I really don't know how this works. She's doing all this with her eyes open and then she has her eyes closed and then she has her eyes open. It feels so ridiculous. It feels like the editor didn't know when to cut in between it. I it, found it fascinating that she had her eyes open pretty much the entire time as if she can just see something different in front of her. Yeah, it, it was wrong. It felt completely wrong. I felt completely taken out of the scene. It would have been better if she was just lying on the ground. I w- actually, I would have preferred if she was lying on the ground. You know that? would have yeah. made more sense. Didn't have to have her walking around the room with Narek behind her going, you're in this doorway now. You've opened up the next path. You're in the next path. It would have been an interesting way to um, uncover what happened to the Romulan telepathy since they, they kind of split from the Vulcans. They have dream telepathy and that's well, all so they have. That may, maybe that's what their, their ritual was and why only Romulans could use it because literally only Romulans are telepathic beings. Well, apparently not. Use it. No. Because now Soji can use it. Great. Maybe he just made it up. Yeah, he probably did. He made the room. It's actually it's actually just a room for uh, prayer. I don't know. It's it's Patrick Stewart's uh, actual um, meditation area when this he's caravan. Not acting. Yeah, <laughs> this is caravan. They they ripped it up at the end. Uh, thankfully, we cut back to Picard uh, on the quest looking for Soji. Uh, I don't know why they didn't just make an announcement over the intercom. Uh, could uh, Doctor Soji Asha please re- uh, report to um, the waiting area? I don't know where they are. That's the, what they the do Avery. all the time. Though. That's the annoying thing. It, if the captain of a ship is looking for you, he doesn't come to you. You go to him. So if the director of a Borg cube is looking for you, it doesn't make sense. Yeah, can you imagine that? Um, uh, Admiral... Admiral... Necheyev. Admiral Necheyev beams aboard the Enterprise D and informs Captain Picard that he's looking for Wesley Crusher. And Picard says, oh, he must uh, be in his quarters. Um, Oh, he's not there. Um, Maybe we can track him on the computer. As opposed to just saying, "Uh, Wesley Crusher, report to the ready room. Then we wouldn't have the mystery of looking around the Borg cube. Where's the fun in that? Uh, Okay, blah, blah, blah. Uh, So (laughs) then we go back to the meditation. And uh, Soji finally has the epiphany. She sees her father. But she doesn't because he's a blur. Very jarring. And then she runs around the table of orchids, was it? Yes. And lo and behold, it's Doll Soji. Or maybe it's Doll Dodge. Doll Doji. Doll Doji for the win. <laughs> and uh, Narek's like, oh, just ignore that. Door. Ignore that. Look up. Oh, I see a planet. There are two red stars moons okay and- okay the the hardest part of this is the fact that narek knew in the dream that there was a window on the roof okay like how is he supposed to know that unless he can see it with her maybe he said it maybe she said it oh. part of the plot part of the I, plot. Don't, I don't know i wasn't i wasn't paying enough attention to be honest Okay, and then the uh, impossible box part finally pays off. Narek has his answer where the androids are held, and he says to he gives uh, Doji a, a parting kiss and says, "You're not real." And locks her in the room with his stupid, stupid box. 
that slowly delivers a, a red poison in the air that's so apparent. It's like, look at me, I'm a poison filling the room. Just go to this. Why, why wasn't it just a, a neutral color? Why wasn't it just, you know, like a gas? You can't yeah, it was see supposed gas. To, it was supposed to be radiation or something. I don't understand why you didn't use the same thing that they used in Nemesis. Yeah, that would, yeah. Well, she would have been gone. She would have been dead. It was the dumbest plan. And if he was so upset by it that he has to do this to her, why tell her that he's going to do it? Why not just have her killed instantly and so she doesn't have a chance to be so worried about it? Why agonizingly let it drag on and have her stuck in this room with red gas filling up? Anyway, so she punches through the wooden floor. Lo and behold, the, the overpowered android can punch through the wooden floor and rip up bulkheads. Stupid Narek. Uh, she gets away. And uh, just as she's barreling through the decks of the ship and on the way to get to her location. Picard comes across a random Borg who just casually, nonchalantly says, Oh, hey, Lacutus. <laughs> w- without the hey, but, you know. Lacutus. Hey, bro. <laughs> yeah. And he just kind of looks at him like, huh? Remember me? <laughs> yeah, sure. Doji drops through the, the floor and lo and behold, old man Picard is standing in front of her holding her necklace saying, Come with me if you want to live. He sounds like a maniac. Yeah, and she just she just believes him because she's been through so much. Why why wouldn't it be strange to have some guy that knows everything about you just standing there right after you've escaped the creepy, dashing Romulan who secretly knows everything about you? Super handsome <laughs> man. And she follows him. Uh, so then uh, Picard and Hugh and Doshi get inside the new and improved queen cell because Hugh has a means of escape for them. The Borg have assimilated the Sicarians. Remember so, them? Yeah, so if anyone remembers the episode of Prime Factors, season one, episode 10 of Star Trek Voyager. In fact, in our live stream, I forgot the name of the species. Uh, it was when Voyager came across these these species of people that just love pleasure and they love having fun. And they have this teleportation technology that can transport over 40,000 light years. But there is a certain catch that I think the writers in this forgot. The only reason that teleportation device worked was because the planet's core was made of some kind of crystal quartz stuff, okay? That could only be used on that planet. Think of it as like Stargate, the way in the Stargate universe they can only use the eighth chevron on the Icarus base because of the planet's core. It's the exact same principle. So, but they just forgot about this. They just stick the transporter onto the Borg cube because, you know, if the Red Angel suit can have infinite power supply and storage... Time crystals. Time crystals, yes. Why, why can't the Borg cube? Maybe they just... Maybe they pulled the core out of the planet and just stuck it onto the Borg cube. Maybe, you know. They actually could have done that, in fairness. There are, there's a very strong possibility they could have done that. And they just have the core in, in tractor beam. We just haven't seen it. It's so big and, and encompassing. They have a little piece of it in everything, I guess. Yeah, the, the, the entire cube is made up of crystals. That's well, why I guess. So. Well, it looks like it was made from Minecraft, but we won't get into that. But yeah. anyway... So, but the JJ and Kurtzman track are obsessed with these long-range transporters. So, you know, why not? Why, why not defy space and time? So they just decide, okay, uh, I'm going to beam to the planet of Nepethy, which um, Picard informs Rios of, so they can run the Nepenthe. Nepenthe. Like Rurapenthe, the jail that was in Star Trek VI. Yes. Undiscovered yes. country. Rurapenthe. Nepenthe. There oh. you go. Okay. Elrond and obviously needlessly stays behind to cover the rear. And we end on a cliffhanger. Because we fade to black and we hear Elrond saying, Please, my friends, choose to live. So, Colin, what did you think of the episode? I thought nothing. I wish I had... <laughs> I I don't have an opinion. I actually don't. I have zero opinion. I This episode had no impact on me whatsoever. I don't even have a bad opinion or good... Nothing. Nope. Nothing. Nope. It was an ex- ex- it was incredibly difficult to make this review at first, especially the live stream, because I just didn't know what to think of the episode. I was like, what did we just watch? Was that Star Trek? Was it generic sci-fi? Was it soap opera in space, judging by the writing and directors? Judging by the writer and director, I'd say that's more likely. They just said, okay, here's the sets and write soap opera. With no mystery, because we already know everything that's happening. We're watching our protagonist, Captain Picard, roaming around bumbling around because we know everything and he doesn't so to us he just seems lost i think that that'd be the best word to describe him what do you think lost 
Yeah, I, I think I think to help concise things. Anyway, I, I might put a rating on it moving forward out of ten. Let's say generic sci-fi and Star Trek. In terms of generic sci-fi, I'd say six, seven. In terms of Star Trek, four. That's being generous. I, I, it was, it was so. Hey, how do you rate something like this if it's so? Well, you have unmoving? to have like you have to have a criteria like, but this, th- it wasn't anything. It didn't exist. It was, it was, invisible. It was a non plus. It was not. There was nothing in it that I enjoyed. There was nothing in it that I hated. It was just boring. Yeah, and I think that that about wraps us up. So. If you liked what you saw here and you want to see more, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button and tune into our live stream after each episode of Star Trek Picard if you're interested. For the Hologrumps, I've been Liam. And I'm Colum. Existence is futile. <laughs>